our as our respected and our beloved speaker, uh, inshallah, she will share her experience on how conducting um, remote teaching and learning effectively. Okay, uh, the experience from uh, from a young lecturer. Okay, um, so inshallah, without further ado, um, I want to welcome Dr. Andi. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. So, inshallah, the talk will, I mean, uh, the talk will be taken around 45 minutes, uh, then followed by question and answering sessions. So, if you have any questions, feel, uh, please feel free to write in the chat box. Okay. Uh, so, without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Andi uh, to deliver her speech. Okay, please welcome Dr. Andi. All right. Um, thanks, Dr. Nornia. Assalamualaikum and good morning. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you everyone for being here um, despite your busy schedule, I know. Uh, so today I'll be sharing my personal experiences uh, on the remote teaching and learning. And as you can see here on the title, I joined IIUM in July 2019 and only experienced teaching in 2.5 semesters right before COVID-19 hit us, right? So I would say that I was in the transition uh, between the traditional uh, teaching and learning and the remote teaching and learning, or we call it in IIUM as RTL. Okay, so um, honestly, I feel very small when Dr. Azura uh, asked me to share my experience on this topic. As a newbie here at KICT, um, there's so much that I need to learn and improve, right? Um, perhaps my teaching uh, method work well with my students and suitable for my cybersecurity courses. Uh, and perhaps it might or, or might not work at yours. Okay, so um, feel free to interrupt me anytime if you have questions or comments. All right. Okay. So um, with coronavirus, right, uh, we know that all universities around the world are shifting classes online. But the reality is not as easy as it sounds, right? So when I read this, um, you know, I got this feeling that, oh my God, what I'm going to do, you know, for my first time ever RTL, right? And I know that it is impossible uh, to know each student's living, their learning or their difficulty, the health condition during this crisis, during this pandemic. So... Considering many students uh, may be isolated, you know, socially, physically, and they feel uh, very anxious. Even me, myself, um, feel worried about many things. So the question here is, are we ready to, you know, have online uh, class? How ready we are to learn online, right? So during the lockdown period, I connected with my friends um, all over the world. Uh, I asked friends in Canada, um, in Saudi Arabia, in Mexico, I wonder how they survive uh, the online uh, learning because at the time um, they started ahead of us, right? In Malaysia, we started a little bit late, but in Canada, they already started the class. So um, with that, tips from them uh, and some research, I come out with the following six tips, right? So these are the agenda for today. Um, I will start with how to make use of the student feedback and uh, how to come up with uh, the do's and the don'ts, uh, you know, before you plan uh, for your teaching. And then here, uh, number three and number four, uh, focus more on the technical stuff and the working environment. And after that, I'll touch on the student uh, engagement. Um, how do I encourage my students um, to stay in my class throughout the whole semester? And last but not least, um, how to ask for help when you know things uh, become overwhelmed, right? So yeah, uh, let's get started. So the first thing here, how did I make use of the student feedback, okay? Um, in order for me um, to make the student feedback work, for successful and effective online learning experiences, you know, um, I need to understand two things here, the student needs and their struggles, right? So having that too on my mind, um, I can plan and I can uh, have, uh, you know, my uh, uh, methods or the strategy, 
right? So Alhamdulillah in KICT, uh, we got all the answers uh, at the beginning of our RTL. Okay. So thanks to uh, Dr. Sharkawi's office uh, for taking fast action uh, on this and providing uh, the lecturers with the report and the survey you know, by uh, students, right? So um, here, the first thing that I did uh, was of course to review uh, the survey and the report, right? And this really helped me uh, for my course development. Uh, as you can see here in the report, uh, we have the collection of complaints and concerns from the students. And we also have the summary of the student problems and the students' requests. So this saved a lot of time on how um, you know, I can plan for my next move, right? And so for example, here, when I see this figure, right? Um, I know that most of the student concern about the excessive workload as you can see here, about 75% of that um, out of the 2,000 responses, right? And then um, this is followed uh, by the need to have the extensions of the due date uh, of the assignments. And they also have problems with the final assessment or the examination dates. And um, some students also do not prefer to have classes or tests uh, on holiday, right? And the list goes on here. Okay, so uh, from the report, right, uh, I come out with the do's and the don'ts for my teaching and my classes. What you see on the screen uh, is one of the examples that's on the previous figure uh, just now. And I always refer to this, uh, you know, do's and don'ts when uh, developing my courses. Okay, so for instance, I have never conducted classes uh, or tests on holiday. And I've never assigned them with the new task uh, or assignment on the final weeks because I know uh, they do not like it, right? And um, from there, you know, I move forward um, to the second step, uh, which is uh, to plan, how to plan for my classes, you know? And in doing planning, um, I did try and error um, because we started um, at the time in February. So um, the first step that I did uh, was to prepare the course tour, right? So I found that this helps student to, um, it helps student to get the glimpse of the whole course from the beginning uh, till the end. And I always uh, present this course tour every time we manage certain uh, you know, uh, topic to show them how we already achieve uh, things, right? And uh, this is one way of, you know, me motivating them. Like, hey, look, we are on this and then we have still a few more to cover, but keep going, no worries, okay? So um, the second step I did uh, was to decide the RTL method, okay? Um, so in this case, uh, I used the mix of asynchronous and synchronous class uh, following the KICT uh, guideline of the RTL. And uh, here I set my live synchronous class uh, to be very, um, you know, um, consistent. I have it every Monday um, and then I use the same link and just use the uh, same platform throughout the semester. And for my uh, asynchronous class, um, I do it on every Wednesday. And I choose uh, the same platform as well, the Padlet. And, um, for the pre-recorded video, I upload it on YouTube, okay? So um, the reason why I did like this uh, was because uh, during the icebreaking, I found that some uh, students were doing a part-time job. Um, they wanted to help their parents who are affected uh, with the MCO. So by having the exact day of uh, having live class and, you know, um, at least, you know, we can ease the burden uh, and encourage the students uh, to join my class. And Alhamdulillah, one of my students uh, told me that this approach uh, really helped him to manage the time wisely. So, um, you know, he's only doing the grab, uh, the food panda thing on uh, Wednesday uh, because he wanted to attend my live class on Monday. All right. Okay. Um, what is more, I also created the monthly uh, RTL calendar. Okay, um, to summarize the whole lecture sessions. And here uh, I specify uh, the topic. So, um, and then they know about the 
uh, information. For example, the online quiz here is an open book, uh, open search engine. And so they can use this calendar um, to help them plan their time, right? Okay, um, next is also to uh, have this poster. <laughs> I created these um, you know, important dates um, for the assessment, such as the quiz, um, the midterm, uh, and the final assessment. So um, students can block their calendar and they can let me know ahead of time if they cannot make it. And I found this very effective um, because uh, I presented this at the very beginning of my class on the first day of lecture. So um, students feel very happy because they can actually uh, plan well and know what's going on you know, throughout uh, the semester, right? Okay, um, the third step um, here, okay, um, is to prepare and master the technology. So I would say this is the core of the RTL uh, steps. <laughs> um, so this is, um, you know, for me to explore um, online learning. So uh, when I first exploring, right, I completely feel overwhelmed um, because there are many tools available, right? And it took me some time to understand how uh, this tool works, how that tool works, and whether it is suitable for my class, right? So uh, again, I did many try and error. Um, I also asked, um, you know, my brother, my youngest brother, who are uh, now studying in university. Uh, so he's my primary <laughs> reference. Um, he is a university student himself. So. I always ask him, um, you know, I always ask him whether this tool is um, good or not. What do you think about this? Because um, you might think that the tool is good for you, but not for the students, right? We always have different perspectives. Okay. So um, today I'm going to share um, several tools that I found useful uh, for you guys to use. Okay. Um, number one, for the planning. Uh, I really love to use Canva, you know, for graphic designs. So if you uh, still remember the, the first step on the planning, I have the calendar, I have the poster, right? So I created them using Canva. And um, you can get the free account um, by using the IIUM email because Canva uh, provide free access uh, for education. So you simply type uh, Canva for education and you log in. And then, um, here, I'm going to show you how uh, it works, right? So here, um, as you can see on my screen, okay, this is the home page of the Canva. Um, Canva has many templates, right? So if you want to create presentation, uh, video, uh, or any other things, it's very easy to use, okay? So I really recommend you guys to um, explore this, okay? It's really worth it. All right, okay. So um, moving on to the second step here, uh, I also like to use the whiteboard.fee uh, for interactive uh, engagement. So um, here uh, I want to highlight that it's very easy to use. Um, students just have to click the link and I actually um, did some experiment here, right? Uh, so this is um, the whiteboard.fee. Okay, um, it's very easy. You can just, um, you know, create new class. If you don't want to use your email, um, it's okay. All right. So here I did some experiment, right? I have the video um, for demo. Okay, I'll play that uh, after this. Um, I noticed that some of the students, um, you know, they become more active when I hide their names, right? So when the first time I introduced this to students, um, I, uh, you know, I showed the names of the students so they feel a little bit shy. And then uh, after several times, I, I you know, wanted to know, okay, what if I hide your names and what can happen? And to my surprise, they become more active and um, the whiteboard become the place for them to tell you know, what they feel and you know, their problems and it becomes the <laughs> confession board yeah. somehow, right? Um, so this is uh, another way for me uh, to engage with the students. So, um, you know, to have that sense of connection with them. All right. So uh, let's uh, see this uh, short clip on how I do it.
Mila, um, so feel free to uh, answer the question here on the whiteboard. Jot anything that you want. I hide the name, so it's privacy, right? Um, let me see. I am not sure. Excited as usual. Okay, this is cool. <laughs> Yeah, get get some coffee, have your breakfast. Um, feel free to do whatever you want. Okay, as long as you participate uh, in some of the activities. All right. Um, Alhamdulillah, happy, excited. I'm not sure, madam. Um, maybe because today is Monday. Yes, I feel you. Everyone, um, you know, is struggling uh, on Monday because Monday blues is real. I'm happy, I guess. Um, okay. Nice drawing. Yes, you can have your breakfast. I'm tired. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I did. Thank you for asking. Sleepy, me too. <laughs> okay, um, whatever it is you guys are facing right now, I really hope you will never give up. Um, keep going, guys, and let's, um, you know, support each other and make this class interesting, okay? All right, um, so, um, yeah, sending this gift to everyone. Okay. All right. So um, um, right the, now, the, um, uh, you know, um, short clip of using whiteboard. Um, so instead of using slides, I prefer to use this whiteboard because I can also um, have the screenshot of the, the, the topics and then I can explain it in an interactive way. OK. All right. So uh, the next tool is uh, to use this wheel of names. OK. Uh, and um, this one, um, you know, I recommend um, for you to use this if you want to have a random uh, name picker, right, for any activities in the class, right? So, uh, for example, here, um, this is the account, and it's very easy to use. Uh, you just copy the list of the name uh, of your students from the iPad link, right, and put it here, and then you just spin it like this, right? Okay. Yeah, so um, my students um, always got ready because they know about this wheel of names. So what I did was um, last semester, I asked the student to um, you know, introduce themselves. I give them the set of the question, uh, as you can see here. Okay, they have to answer two questions. Um, the way of answering is up to them. They can turn on the mic, they can uh, write it in the whiteboard or they can uh, you know put it in the chat um, because i use uh, google uh, google meet right okay and um i also use um kahoot and quizzy uh, i think most of you guys are familiar with this um especially when i wanted to do recap okay um i always started with a short recap um or perhaps um somehow it depends on the course um for one of the course, I uh, use Kahoot at the end of the lecture, right? So just to uh, evaluate their understanding, right? And um, of course, I need to get uh, to give something to my student, right? Uh, after they, uh, you know, um, manage to score higher marks, so I will give them free one mark for the top five uh, of the winners. And um, surprisingly, um, students actually waiting for it. <laughs> and they even ask, sometimes I forgot, and they ask me, Madam, do we have Kahoot? Um, you know? And I said, no, we do not have enough time, and you know, perhaps next uh, class. So um, yeah, it, again, it's try and error. Um, it might work well in one section, but not on the other section. Um, so we just have to try the you know, possible tools that can actually fit in your section, OK? All right, so next is my favorite tool, um, Padlet. Yeah, however, it has some limitation. Um, you can only create three free posts. Otherwise, you have to subscribe. So what I did was, um, you know, I created a specific email for each of the section. So I can allocate the number of the posts for the section. So by doing that, I can use the free account. Um, so here is the example of um, Padlet. 
All right, I'm sharing. Okay, um, this one. So if you click one of these, okay. Um, this is uh, for my asynchronous class, right? So rather than giving them uh, just the pre-recorded video and some links, I wanted it to be in a you know good flow so student can follow, right? So um, in Padlet, you can use uh, many format. You can have uh, this kind uh, of divider. You can also have a series of timeline like this one, right? Um, so the good thing about it, right? Um, you can start, uh, for example, like here, um, I recorded the um, instruction. Assalamualaikum and good day, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So for today's Padlet, we're gonna learn cryptography. Right. So there are so the many links that... that I always put uh, at the very beginning. And then um, here I put the step number so they can follow. And the recorded lecture is here. All right. Um, it's a link on YouTube. Hi, assalamualaikum yeah, so, everyone. Uh, I also I uh, put another resources for them to understand better, right? Um, and I always give them the example and for them to try um, by themselves to dirty their hands, right? So, um, alhamdulillah, students really like this approach, okay? Um, and the bonus part here is you can use memes, all right, to make them feel ease uh, and, you know, um, easy to follow uh, the lecture and at the end I always put the um, attendance and uh, here is the reflection right um, they can always give me feedback if they like it or not and they can even do thumbs up or thumbs down rating if they do not like it right um, there are many ways uh, of using Padlet um, you can also use Padlet for question and answer right so student can post any um, question here, then you can uh, respond immediately, right? Or you can respond later. But uh, I'm using it as a platform for my asynchronous class, right? So something like this. And uh, sometimes I ask them to, you know, um, do um, the exercise and they have to answer it on the specific post. So you can know when the student is responding to the question. You know, sometimes I got the notification at three in the morning, um, but I know it's from those uh, who have, you know, work, um, part-time job. They even mentioned there that, um, Madam, I just uh, come back from work and now I have the time um, to do my asynchronous class. So in terms of the duration of the deadline, if I give them a simple task, I always give them like a one week gap. So um, today, Wednesday, uh, I give them this uh, simple task and I expect them to finish by the next uh, Wednesday, you know, during the live asynchronous class. Um, all right, so, okay. Now, um, moving on to the next tool that I also love is for the assessment, all right? Um, I use three different approaches here, okay? First, to have um, the fun and easy test based on any movie trailer or any trending issues, right? And it's, of course, open book, all right? The second is to have the structured test of problem solving scenario. Um, and of course, the level of difficulty is medium to high. And uh, for the second test, I usually um, go for closed book format. Um, and the third one is to have the mix of both, right? So um, I use uh, Add Puzzle to do number one, all right? And I got uh, positive feedbacks from my student. So here is the example of using Add Puzzle. Uh, Add Puzzle is a platform where you can uh, embed any video. Um, you can get it from YouTube, from TED, uh, TED Talk, or any other links. And you can um, set for uh, the questions, right? You can create your own question and you can uh, see the student progress immediately. Um, so let's see this example of um, this startup um, Korean drama. It was a thing at that time, like everyone was talking about startup and uh, even in cybersecurity community, right? People are talking about how one of the scenes where they, uh, you know, 
come with this um, ransom way, right? And how uh, accurate it was, you know? The, um, somehow the director did very good job because uh, it was actually the real uh, website that they show and the real um, ransomware with the real description key, all right? So yeah, let's take a look and we can uh, discuss this later. Okay, so usually I welcome them, all right? Um, I give them um, some brief information here. Um, I allocate one hour and 30 minutes, the whole class time for them to answer this. I highlight it's open um, search engine, open book. And of course, I have to put the reminder about the plagiarism, all right? So um, here, I just want to know, <laughs> this is just like, you know, they have to do disclaimer or something like, um, you know, a random survey I did, right, for them to answer. And then I give the scenario of the whole scene because this is just three minutes uh, video. So they have to understand the scenario before they answer the question, right? So um, this is about the uh, ransomware. All right, and specifically targeted South Koreans in 2017. So uh, this scene, um, actually uh, the real uh, scenario, all right? And then uh, I ask question. Um, for example, like this one, um, do you think it is a good idea to pay for the ransom? Justify your answer. Because we, they were talking about, you know, hey, uh, why you don't just pay for the ransom, right? Um, so that kind of question. Um, for this one, I give them the multiple choice. Um, you know, um, they have to select the best answer for this. Um, <clears throat> Um, this is the tool that been used in the movie scene. All right, the OLEDB. It's um, it's a famous tool uh, in reverse engineering. Right. So. Um, yeah. So basically, everything that is on the scene uh, will, you know, um, be asked in the next question. Right. So they have um, to understand the whole thing. They can rewatch. So we were uh, actually um, discussing about the malware, um, you know, ransomware. The best prevention is, of, of course, to have a backup, right? So uh, having this kind of scenario, and it is uh, in the, you know, in the uh, current issues, you know, everyone was talking about this, right? So it gives the uh, sense of, you know, uh, um, fun uh, edu edutainment, I would say. Right, uh, students enjoy answering this quiz, um, and they found that um, the concept of uh, open book exam it's it's really good in this kind of scenario because uh, I did ask them, um, you know, uh, uh, I did ask them to uh, explore the um, the source code of this ransomware, you know, by giving the link. That is one of the question here at the end. Yeah, this one. So um, the source code of this ransomware is available on GitHub, right? So um, the next thing is um, the task for them to actually analyze the source code and to find the disk, the decryption key, sorry. Um, so um, it requires um, a lot of things here, uh, even though it's easy and it's fun, but they need to understand the whole process, right? Yeah, um, and I think, okay, just, let me skip this. Yeah, and uh, at the end of the question, right? Um, I usually give link um, for them um, to um, give feedback if they like this kind of um, quiz or not, right? So um, of course, I got several feedback. Um, like some students like this kind of uh, 
interactive quiz. Um, some prefer to have a traditional one. Um, it depends on the student and uh, it depends on section. Uh, what happened last semester, I had four uh, classes. Um, so in one section, it worked well, but in other section, it's not, right? So you have to understand the um, students. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Or let me just see. If you have question, you can just interrupt me, okay? All right. Um, for the second assessment, um, for the structured one, I use Aitaklim. Um, I really like, um, you know, the the format that Aitaklim uh, offers here. Other than true and false and multiple choice, Aitaklim also supports uh, other formats such as the matching answer, um, the drag and the drop, um, and also the drop down list. Right. So um, it's it's easy uh, to actually use that. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Andy, I'm uh, yes. sorry to interrupt. Since uh, uh, we, uh, you are discussing on uh, the assessment, we have mm -hmm. one question from Dr. Liana here regarding oh, okay. on the final assessment. Okay, so for the labs hands on, uh, how many hours and how do you schedule and prepare for the labs hands on? Yeah, and because um, it takes time for a student to answer, right? Uh, yes, uh, I agree with you, uh, Dr. Liana. Um, for me, I always put the hands-on uh, session uh, on Wednesday during my asynchronous class, right? Um, so I use Padlet. Uh, I think I have one of the examples here that I can share with you. Um, I use Padlet to uh, put the step-by-step -step, uh, process, right? So it's easy for students uh, to follow. Um, like, I think... Um, yeah, this is... Let's learn um, steganography, right? So um, in this um, Padlet, right, uh, you can see that um, this is where I want to have the hands-on session. Um, the first thing that I ask them is to watch the video to understand um, and then download the artifacts that I provided, all right? And then I also um, recorded uh, the tutorial for students to follow here. And I also created the documentation. If they don't like the video or if they have problem with the internet, they can just download the document and follow the step-by-step -step guideline, right? Um, so um, as you know that hands-on lab um, requires you know, several operating systems, right? So some students prefer to use Linux, um, some using Mac OS, so I have to consider all uh, platforms, right? And um, I know it takes some time, uh, but by having this recorded uh, and you know uh, documented uh, step by step, it helped me to somehow um, you know allocate the time, uh, and I can manage it uh, wisely, right? So I hope I answer that. Um, but however, um, this is for the um, second year course, right? Uh, the principle of IT security, the introduction. But for the um, um, I mean, uh, the what you call it, the the senior senior course. <laughs> Sorry, um, the what do you call it here? The major, not the major, the minor. What we call it, Doctor Nona? I forgot. Um, the elective. Yeah, yeah. elective. Thank you, Doctor Hafiza. <laughs> I lost word. But for the elective course, uh, for example, the network security, um, it requires online interaction with the students, right? Um, because we use um, another platform, which is the sandbox. So they need uh, to do some simulation of attacks, right? Um, when I did record a video, um, somehow students got difficulty to follow and they wanted to ask live questions. So uh, I always ask them at the very beginning of the lecture, uh, how do they prepare, uh, how do they prefer um, the hands-on session? And we're gonna go by uh, the voting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, any other questions on the assessment? Sorry, Dr. Andy. Ah, yes. Uh, okay, thank you uh, about that. So about the final assessment, so you uh -huh. means you do it in the lab, uh, lab hands-on. So is it like I mean assignment or project form something like that they submit not not on that day is it like that um, no uh, for the final assessment uh, when it comes to lab and hands on um what I did was I divided into two uh, session right uh, 
the final assessment, uh, the first 20% is for the lab. The second 20% is for um, the problem solving. So for the lab, uh, I give them scenario uh, within that duration, the one hour and uh, 30 minutes during the class time. Uh, because I know that they do not like to have it on different uh, day. So what I did was um, I use a simple scenario, right? And for example, instead of asking them to analyze, I already gave them the output. So they have to mention uh, the steps that they need to take, or perhaps uh, I, I'm giving them uh, the process and they have to give me the output. Yeah, so something like that. I cut the process. Um, but still using the tools, um, but considering um, the different platform that they have uh, for the final assessment, I usually ask them to use the web best tool. So for example, instead of using, um, you know, um, Wireshark, for example, right? You can also use the online uh, network analyzer. So it will save the time. Thank you. Ah, yes. Extending to, to that question from Dr. Liana, uh, do you do you mean uh, you have different sets of questions for different sections or? Um, yes, exactly. Right. Um, the same category, um, the same level of difficulty, but different set. So, for example, in section one, I give them the uh, PCAP example of the DNS domain name. Uh, section two, I will give uh, the FTP network traffic. And in section three, I will give them the HTTP. But the question will be the same, uh, um, you know, to give the hash value of the malicious file, for example. Yeah. So, Dr. Tani, you use the same scenario for the, all the sections? Uh, not, uh, not same scenario, different scenario, but uh, similar category. Because I don't want to have the different, um, you know, level of difficulty, right, between the two sections, for example. Uh, the lab one question uh, will be on the uh, network uh, attack, right? And I use ransomware. So the other section, I use uh, adware. So it's the same. It's still in the malware category, for example. Yeah. If in other section, I, I use DDoS uh, simulation attack, then in other uh, section, uh, I use uh, the DOS attack, for example. Yeah. All right, so do you use, uh, do you reuse the, I mean, the scenario and the question again for the next semester? No, <laughs> no, that's not a so good idea. <laughs> yeah, because I know that um, student, um, the brotherhood here in IUM is very good. <laughs> Students are sharing. Um, so I always change uh, the question. I always change the artifact. So even the same scenario, so you will not use in the yeah. next. Yeah, completely a different set, even for the group project, actually. So <laughs> I got this, you know, difficult time to actually, um, you know, provide all the artifacts because when it comes to the lab, right, um, you have to create, for example, the simulation of the network attack for one um, section and then for one group. And then imagine if you have like, you know, 12 groups and you're going to have 12 different um, scenario and then, um, Again, last semester I had four classes. So yeah, I, I created like almost um, 70 artifacts. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Andy. All right, you're welcome. Okay, um, so the step number five is um, to record the lecture. And I use YouTube for creating the playlist. Um, why? Because I know that some of my students, um, you know, they have this difficulty of um, you know, uh, getting access to this, right, uh, due to the internet problem during the live class. So having the recorded lecture really helped them to go back and do some recap anytime they want, right? And of course, I need to ask, um, you know, the, the, the permission uh, from my student um, due to the privacy because, um, yeah, some students concern about this. They don't want it to be online, um, you know, because when I ask questions, they answer, um, people can tell, right? Based on the name and everything, okay? Um, all right, so we are on the step four now, um, setting up the workspace, okay? Um, I just wanted to share this step because um, I got difficulty at first, you know, on preparing the um, good environment for my uh, RTL, right? 
um, I tried um, to go to the office, um, but somehow we know that, uh, you know, we only allowed to go um, after the MCO is lifted. So I do not have any choice. I have to stay at home and I'm staying with my family, with my brother, and they also have their own class. Um, so um, preparing a good device really helped um, for me, at least, because um, here when I use the smart drawing pad, uh, for my network security class, um, I can see that the interaction with um, the students become easier, right? And um, I can explain things uh, better. Um, and I really uh, encourage you guys to invest some uh, money to buy the smart drawing pad, okay? So I just wanted to share a short um, video clip here on how I did it. Right connected to this uh, switch this connected to this switch printer and connected to firewall right okay and we also have what we call nowadays as what cloud services okay so you can have cloud over here so the concept of well you can access data on the go right because you have your mobile smartphone, you have the cloud, so you can access anything, uh, anywhere, anytime. And then we can, the server is capable of doing many things, right? And then- uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's enough, right? <laughs> so, um, right. So the last thing that I wanted to share here, here um, on this, right? Um, when I had the back-to-back -back classes, right? Um, and sitting on the chair from morning to afternoon really gave me the back pain. So at least by using this chair, uh, it can reduce uh, the back pain. So it's very important for you to feel uh, comfortable so that you can somehow you know, deliver well to your students, right? Okay, um, now to the important step, which is how do I communicate with my students, right? Um, so there are three steps involved here, uh, before the class, during the class, and after the class, okay? So um, the goal here is to build a sense of community, the sense of connection, you know? Um, I always had this discussion with my brother, um, like, you know, how did your lecturer start the class, right? Uh, did your lecturer ask you a question, you know, how do they welcome you, right? Um, and then, um, Getting the feedback from my brother, right? Uh, I come up with this idea of having my own uh, lobby, right? So this is the virtual lobby. Um, and then um, from the feedback that I've received, right? From the student, um, they really like this because what happened, uh, they also have the back-to-back -back classes, right? And sometimes uh, they feel exhausted. You know, they finish one class and another class is on. Um, so they need some like buffering time. So um, I'm always give them like five minutes gap before I start uh, my class. And while waiting um, for the lecture, uh, I play several uh, lo-fi uh, refreshing music um, recommended my by my brother, something like this. So every um, live uh, synchronous class, I will have a different, you know, uh, lo-fi with the image somehow explaining how the student feel, right? And um, previous semester, uh, I come out with my own um, music lobby, um, right? So um, I didn't know that this small thing, right? Actually affect the student emotion, right? Uh, in the feedback, uh, student mentioned that how they feel, um, you know, um, a little bit ease before uh, starting the class, just by uh, listening to this lo-fi music, right? Um, I think this is one thing about the generation, um, the, you know, um, because my brother is 21 years old and this is a thing for 21 years old, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, it's no harm to try and somehow it worked, right? For me, uh, for my class. Uh, yeah, and for your information, I created this um, using Canva. It's very easy, you know. There are so many templates that you can use on Canva. All right, um, the second step is to offer the 24-7 online help and feedback. 
Yeah, so um, the moment I offer this, I have to commit on it, right? Um, so I was surprised actually to see how um, the student, you know, giving me the feedback and asking for help at three in the morning, right? Um, well, I know that the pandemic, um, you know, has, you know, affected our life, right? So uh, when I received the message at three in the morning and um, if I was up at that time, then I just reply my student, right? And they feel very grateful for that. But I know it's it's somehow difficult for us. It's it's very challenging for us to actually help this um, student like 24 seven, right? So what I did, I created platform for them, right? So uh, I promised that I will respond uh, within 24 hours, right? So I use the Italim, um chat. Um, I can, uh, I also offer them to email me, right? Um, but the effective way is actually to, um, not this one, to use the uh, Padlet. Yeah, the Padlet for um, the, the feedback. So um, I can respond uh, on the Padlet easy, uh, easily and somehow it works. So we have the two-way communication there. Okay, um, moving on to the third step is how I use several ways of uh, response uh, during the lecture, right? So um, as I mentioned before, I use the whiteboard, um, you know, the chat, the rest hand button, right? So let's watch this. Question. If you have question, you can raise your hand, you can comment in the chat, or you can also comment in the whiteboard here. All right, cool. Oh, I, I really like this. So cute. Right. So I noticed that students prefer to use the whiteboard um, rather than you know using the microphone. Um, uh, perhaps it's convenient for them, right? Okay. Um, I also asked the student um, to read their answer. Um, remember, we have the uh, asynchronous class on Wednesday, right? So on Monday, uh, I started with asking student um, to do some recap um, and ask them to just uh, you know. Uh, read your answer that you posted on Padlet. Uh, those are really some of the best videos I've have seen so far. The idea is like funny and like simple, and I really enjoy like watching that. It wasn't boring at all, mm -hmm. and I've actually learned a lot. Like some practices that I didn't do, do like in my life, you know, and I didn't know how dangerous is it like to share that. For example, in like public Wi-Fi. We always search for web like Wi-Fi web like Wi all the time. We don't really know how dangerous it is. That was like one of the videos that I really didn't know about it. All right, really cool. Yeah. Right. And then what about the Islamic value there? You mentioned. Oh, the Islamic value I mentioned about here is like when the guy found the USB and then he just took it and he plugged it in his laptop to see what does it have inside. If mm -hmm. the Islamic perspective, we shouldn't do that. In fact, we should like, if we find something that it's not for us, like we should just like, you know, uh, give it to police or someone because yeah, like- So uh, that's the example of how I did the recap with my students. So um, just to make sure that they follow the um, asynchronous class uh, on Padlet, right? And I use the wheel of name um, to call for <laughs> the name of the students, right? Um, and um, to utilize the wheel of the names, I met the weekly ice breaking, right? So I have um, full class last semester, 40 students. So uh, on the first day of the lecture, I only choose two of them to introduce themselves. And then like every live uh, synchronous class, I'm going to have another two uh, students to introduce themselves. They, so they always get ready for that. All right. Uh, you just have to pick and answer two questions. For example, what was your childhood dream? All right. Well, uh, my childhood dream was to become a teacher. And Alhamdulillah, it happened. Uh, dream comes true. Here I am. Okay, so I'm going to speed. All right. So please introduce yourself, Fitri. Um, all right. So my name is Muhammad Fitri bin Mohd uh, So I live in Selangor. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so so, which question do you want to answer today? Uh, I'm going to answer this, the questions on what was your childhood dream. So, my, okay. my childhood dream was to be an astronaut. My show. Right. So, that's how I interact with uh, my student, right? Every um, week on the live uh, synchronous class. Okay. Um, 
Next is to have a quick survey. Um, Dr. Andy, uh, yeah. we have a one, uh, one question here regarding right, on okay, the sure. several ways of response that you did mention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, from Dr. Zainatul Abdullah, will it be difficult to manage if there are several ways of responses during lecture? So how you manage the challenge? Yes, um, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's why uh, if you um, look at the workspace that I have, right, I have uh, yeah. the two monitors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one is to open the Google Meet to see the chat. And I also use my phone um, for the notification to receive. Um, it's very challenging um, at first um, because I have to do multitasking, right? Uh, but uh, because I need to consider, um, you know, the students' preferences and not all students prefer uh, to talk, not, not all prefer to write uh, or to draw, right? Um, yes, it is um, challenging, but um, after some times, I, I'm kind of get the, you know, the way of it. So um, it becomes easy, inshallah, after that. It's, okay. it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's challenge at the first, but yes. at the end of the... Uh, yeah, be... and then um, because we get, we're going to have like, you know, um, more session with your student, right? So you're going to know like the student preferences, right? Yeah. So um, I noticed that in the morning class, they, they somehow prefer to talk, right? But in the afternoon class, um, they prefer to use the whiteboard, yeah. So having that patent, uh, somehow I already, you know, understand my student. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. All right. Okay. Um, thank you for the question. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the, the next step here is to have the quick survey. Um, this is to validate the survey that I got from Dr. Sharkawi's office, right? Uh, that one is very general. So I wanted to know how many in that section prefer to have group project. Right, how many are sharing device with the family members so I can plan well, right? And I can communicate with them, um, you know, uh, in effective way. So um, this is on the first lecture. And um, after the quiz, you know, uh, end of the question, uh, I put the note uh, on at puzzle so they can click the Padlet and give their feedback. And I also wanted to highlight about this CSF, the continuous uh, student feedback. This really helped me to rethink uh, and change my decision, right? Um, as uh, to relate with Dr. Zainatul um, question, right? Um, sometimes when uh, I use a uh, whiteboard, right? Um, and then I got the feedback from the student. They said, uh, Madam, it's difficult for me to use the whiteboard because I'm using mobile phone. It's very small. And I, I changed for that section. I said, okay, we are not using whiteboard. Uh, we are using another platform. Let's use, um, you know, uh, the chat in the Google Meet, right? So it, it's a continuous feedback from your student. And um, I got this idea of having my own, uh, you know, CFS platform uh, from this Read My Professors. Um, we actually used this uh, in Canada when I was a student. Um, but uh, this Read My Professors website uh, is not that friendly. Uh, students have to sign up. So I don't want uh, to burden my student. So um, I use menti.com as the CSF platform, right? Every time uh, after the test, I ask the student, how was the exam? Easy, average, or hard? then I know um, I can see the different uh, performance from different sections, right? Um, and then I ask them directly, how can I improve for the future test? So some of them asking for more objective question, more problem solving, more past cases, and uh, et cetera, right? Um, and also the quiz, all right? Uh, when the first time I used Edpuzzle, uh, I found that majority of them um, like it. And that's why for the second quiz, I stick with the same platform. Um, so and Andy, then, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, meaning that um, uh, every, uh, I mean, after you did your assessment, you will uh, mm -hmm. ask the feedback from yes. the students. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's continuous. It's not like the end of the semester, then you ask, no. Uh, mm -hmm. After each activity, in fact, after each class, right? Yes. I always remind them, you know, you have your reflection uh, on Italim, I put their reflection button so they can just mm -hmm. click and, uh, you know, give their feedback. So I'm actually going to that. Uh, this is the example of the CSF platform that I have for my student. So um, in this, uh, I have what we call as a student reflection. They can um, jot down whatever they want, um, you know, anything. Um, but I also have a specific, um, you know, uh, category for my performance. They have to read my, read my teaching performance right here. Um, and then uh, for each of the material, for example, do they like the lab hands-on? They can do the writing. 
um, they can also uh, read the group project and they can also do the like or dislike, you know, thumbs up and thumbs down button like this, right? So this is how I can get their feedback, right? So um, I asked for the uh, room of improvement, right? So one of them suggested to have a group WhatsApp here, as you can see, but we already have Telegram, so yeah. And um, again, I know they are into memes, <laughs> same like my brother, so I asked them to upload their favorite meme. So this is how um, I encourage them to actually come to this uh, CSF platform, all right? All right. Um, okay, so um, we only have like four minutes left. Um, improving the student engagement. Um, I started with this, um, you know, try and error um, by having this habit of asking how they are today. How are you feeling today? You know, so um, before this, I just say, hi, everyone. How are you? Um, but having the whiteboard, it helped me to somehow interact uh, more with the student, right? So um, when you see the feedback from the student, it's so, um, um, you know, it's a mixed feeling. You know, we know that uh, like two or three of them are very sad. Um, they are feel very stressed. Some are feeling very excited. Some are homesick. So by having that several response, right, from the student, I can actually change my way of um, teaching at that specific, uh, during that specific day. Right. So when I ask them to answer A, B, C, D, and majority of them um, mention, you know, D, I don't even know how to answer. I know that they are not in the situation um, of, you know, um, they are not ready to learn, right? But somehow they come out, uh, they come into my class. So I make it, um, you know, I change. So I, instead of covering more topics, I have more activities. So that they feel, you know, ease and um, somehow they get motivated in my class, right? And uh, I also have these several, um, sorry, several students who uh, had no idea. Even after several classes, they they kind of lost, right? So I always explain how to use the tools. This is the example. Okay, so every Wednesday, right? Uh, we're gonna have a synchronous class and. Um, at the moment, I'm using Padlet as one of the platform. So um, you have to follow the step-by-step -step instruction here. And then somehow you have to answer the question. I'm giving you some, you know, uh, tasks at the end of the lecture. So please complete this. All right. Um, I noticed that some of you are still not doing it. I'm not sure maybe you missed this question or you are not familiar with Padlet. Yeah, so um, I took some time to explain um, the tools that I use so students know how to use it, um, you know, how to utilize it, right? And yes, uh, I mentioned about these memes uh, to connect and, uh, you know, to motivate my students. Um, and actually, uh, research suggests that memes create this new neur neural connection in the brain. So um, this is the fun way of delivering message. And yes, I agree with this because my students uh, love memes, right? Okay. Um, another thing is on this very little thing that I did, but somehow affected my student. You know, uh, when it comes to the final assessment, I um, use italim and I have the password, right? Um, it just, you know, I just... Um, try using the motivational password like never give up keep holding on I am strong bring it on so students are like you know um, love it like I was like okay it worked so before they answer the question yeah madam we are you know I'm strong madam you know something like that so it somehow touched my heart and I think um, there are many ways of you to actually you know motivate your student you know even a simple uh, you know action will do okay and okay Finally, at the end, <laughs> the last step here is to ask for the help, all right? Um, I know that um, here it's very overwhelming to have everything together. And this is the first time, uh, especially for me. Uh, I'm still new uh, in teaching. I'm still learning. Um, but I always be motivated when I see my student, you know, uh, reactions. All right. Um, I'm just being honest. Sometimes I told them like, hey, look, uh, I'm having back to back class. Uh, and then your class is the final, uh, the last class in the whole day, like, you know, at four at the time. So uh, let's do it together. Right. OK. And somehow it worked when they know the situation. OK. 
So um, I recommend you guys to ask around. Um, I did ask a lot of questions to Dr. Hafiza <laughs> as an academic advisor, um, to my mentor, Dr. Mazia, um, and also um, the CPD also helped a lot. Um, I'm lucky that I had this uh, BTMC training uh, during the MCO. So somehow um, CPD helped me um, you know, to choose the best uh, strategy for me to do RTL, right? Um, I also asked the HOD, um, last time I got difficulty with the eye talim, I asked Dr. Aslin. Um, so yeah, us around, you are not alone in this, okay? Um, yeah, I also connect with other online educators. So I joined this um, group for teachers actually. Um, um, teachers in Malaysia, they have this um, teacher collection on Facebook. So uh, this group really helpful. Um, they always share the tutorial of using, uh, you know, e-learning tools, right? So I didn't know about OBS until I actually joined this group. The wheel of name, I got it from this group as well. Canva tutorial is from this group as well, right? Okay, and I also joined, um, you know, the teaching conference um, during the lockdown. Um, somehow I connect with my friends in Canada so I can get a different perspective. Um, yeah, I think for takeaway, right? Um, and this is based on my personal experience. It might work uh, on you, it might not. Um, but I noticed that these three, the engagement, the feedback and the assistance, all right, should come together, right? Um, so that students have this sense of, um, you know, connection and community, right? So that they do not feel um, isolated, right? During the uh, crisis. And um, I noticed that students do not like to read the announcement. <laughs> My brother told me um, as well. So do not abuse the announcement. I use the announcement on the ITALIM just for the assessment, right? Uh, when uh, I wanted to highlight about the exam, the reminder of the exam, the test or the quiz. And do not ignore students' message. Um, sometimes I just reply, I get back to you um, later. I have something else to do. Um, and then if I forgot, then, you know, uh, I just apologize, uh, right? Uh, but please do not ignore. Uh, always check your spam. Um, I, I know that um, most of the time my students' email <laughs> goes to the spam. Um, and yeah, don't go it um, alone, right? Um, ask around, yeah? ask for help if you're stuck um, in you know, helping your student. I personally got this difficulty when um, last semester I had like several students MIA. Right, um, and it's difficult to to somehow reach them. Right, so I asked Dr. Hafiza what is the best solution for us to help that student. I contacted Dr. Hazwani from uh, DIS, Dr. Kowi. So we we asked for the help to help the students. Right. Yeah, I think that's all. Um, any other question, guys? Um, any other question, everyone? Sorry. Let me see the chat. Seems there is no question from the floor. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Andy, for your comprehensive, uh, for your comprehensive um, talk. So we learned a lot from you. Uh, Dr. Mazna wants to ask a question, I guess. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, sure. Please, Dr. Mazna. It's a good point about not uh, uh, using announcement. Uh -huh. What do you think is the best way to make an announcement? Sometimes it's very important and yet they miss it. Yeah, um, that's why I, instead of having uh, announcement, uh, the official announcement on ITALIM, uh, mm -hmm. I use the reminder on the uh, Telegram. Um, I pin the message instead of uh, resending the same uh, you know, uh, message. Yeah, is that answer? Thank you very much. And then uh, another thing, right? Like um, the calendar that I have and the important dates that I have, right? So I have it in my uh, course logistics section. So, um, you know, uh, it's there and students know what's going to happen, right? So, yeah, that's how to avoid, um, you know, more announcement. <laughs> Okay, any other question, uh, ladies and gentlemen? 
Okay. Uh, right, Dr. Andy, we would like to uh, convey our, uh, I mean, thank you so much, okay, for sharing your experience. Um, we learned a lot from it. Um, yeah, you, your hard work pay off, okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, it's very comprehensive uh, seminar that we have today, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so since there's no question from the floor, so so once again, Dr. Andy, thank you very much. Um, so uh, for the uh, for the audience, okay, thanks for your participations. Okay. Uh, yeah. So thanks I, everyone for coming. Yeah. Okay. So before we end our sessions, uh, 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 let's recite uh, Tasbih Kafara and Surah Tural Wal As. Okay, thank you, Dr. Andy. Assalamualaikum thank warahmatullahi you. wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Take care, everyone.